Welcome back, YouTube. Sorry, my thing's moving. Welcome back, YouTube. This is Dave Lucas with Injection Molding Skills and More. Um, today's video, we're actually going to go over DOE, but before I get into that, I wanted to welcome everybody back to the channel. I hope you had a blessed holiday, a great New Year's. Let's start this year off right. Let's do it right. Um, today's date is uh, January the 9th. You can see it's beautiful outside. It's 80 degrees here in Florida. Um, I've been sick for the last couple of days trying to get over this cold because it's been hot here one day, cold the next day. So I'm up and down a little bit. But I wanted to go over in this video. We're in this video, we're actually going to go over DOEs. What is a DOE? How to uh, do a DOE? and the six different studies you can use to implement into this DOE. So a DOE, a DOE, a DOE is a design of experiment, okay? I'm gonna read something to you to help you guys out with this. So a design of experiment, sometimes called experimental design, we can be a powerful tool for any molder. We live in a molding, mold, we live and mold in a, a demand era of, of processing, okay? So we just want, we, we, we mold things with tighter windows, less scrap, quicker cycle times, even all that stuff is what you're looking for. So if you go out there and you wanna compete in the molding industry, the less scrap you can run, the faster you can make that part, and the best quality part, repeatability of, of part, is what you're looking for. That's what customers are looking for. So if you have like a big company like BMW, Mercedes, any of these companies that come to you and say, hey, we want you to mold our parts for us, that's what they're gonna look at. That's the criteria they're gonna look at. Can you be efficient? Can you cut down on scrap reduction? Can you mold the same quality of part repeatable over and over and over and over again? Okay, so I'm gonna go over a couple things with you on a DOE, okay? So basically, whenever you wanna do a DOE, an approach to it, is you wanna set the conditions that in an injection molding process that produce acceptable molded parts with repeatable part weight and thickness for the first de determining range, okay? Then ranges are de defined around process settings to a competent, a competent I can't say that word, long-term variations, okay? So what they're trying to say is like this, get your process set, once you get your process set, then you're gonna set like upper and lower control limits, okay? So what you're gonna do is, let's say you get you a good process window set. In that process, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna check your cycle time. You're gonna take the hold time down as low as possible and up as far as possible to try to find a mid range in between there, okay? There's a lot of different studies that you can find on here that'll actually show you those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put over, I think it's in this corner. It might be over in this corner. I'm gonna give you the, the benefits of doing a DOE, okay? Provides an idea of a process robustness or provides an idea of a process robustness. Helps identify the most optimal process, provides a troubleshooting guide, reduces customer returns and therefore customer confidence. So you want that customer confidence, you know? Reduces and or optimizes the mold cycle times. So this could help you out. You could actually cut time away by doing some of these studies that are in here like a gate free study, a cavity balance study. There's a lot of different ones in here. Improve the overall efficiency of the molded operation, okay? So these are some of the, the benefits of doing a DOE. And like I said, I'll put these up in the windows somewhere up here so you guys can see it. This will help you out down the road, you know, to make sure you have an optimal process and it stays within that upper and lower control limits that you're looking for in your process. Okay? <clears throat> there are six studies that are done to find the most robust areas of the molding process, okay? And these six studies, you can try these once you get your process set up and you, and you feel you're making good parts, try these studies. And I'll put these in the, in the 
corners to tell you which ones they are. Later on, maybe I could go back on another video and show you what each one of these are, okay? So number one would be a viscosity curve. I've talked about this before in another video inside of my videos, okay? You have a viscosity curve that tells you how fast to shoot, how fast you want your injection speed to be going. The next step, a cavity balance study. You might wanna do that and check that, make sure where you're at as far as, are you filling equally into your cavity, you know, into your molded part. If you're running a, a tool that has four cavities or six cavities or eight cavities, whatever you have, okay? The next step would be a pressure drop study. So you wanna do that study. The next study would be a cosmetic process window study. You know, try that, see how that does. The next study would be a gate seal study. How much are you actually packing into the mold? If, you're put, if you say you have five seconds on your hold time, do you actually need that whole five seconds? Does your gate automatically freeze at two seconds and then you're just adding three more seconds just because? Do that study, do a gate seal study, try that, see how that works for you. The next one, step six would be a cooling, a cooling time study. Try a cooling time study. Do you actually need this much cooling time? If it call, if you're doing the study and you've got 35 seconds of cooling time on there, your part comes out of the mold, is it shrinking more or less? Do the studies to try to find out exactly where <clears throat> your cooling time needs to be at, the water, the optimal, you know, doing the DOE is gonna help you out a lot with all this because it's gonna tell you, okay, if I run my water temperature at 120 degrees and do the study on it, what's the part doing? at this much time, then if I have the water temperature at 80 degrees, what's it doing, okay? Same thing with your cooling time. If I have 30 seconds of cooling time here and I drop at the low limits at 20 seconds of cooling time and the high is at 40 seconds, what's it doing to my part? You gotta find that range in between there is what you're looking for, okay? That's the whole part of doing a DOE is you're trying to find those different areas um, what would help you out what would increase your your cycle time what would increase not having so much scrap you know so the whole thing is is can you reproduce the same part over and over and over and over again okay we always all talk about making a part 90 to 95 percent or 95 to 98 percent full okay and then adding your pack and hold okay so if you go up to a process and you actually go and say, hey, I wanna go look at this process, you go up to it and you shut the pack and hold off, that part should always be 95 to 98% full every time. If it ain't, then you know you don't have a very good processing window. You, you know, that's the whole key to making a good process. I know I'm ranting and raving about stuff, but I'm gonna try to put a couple things in here. I'll show you guys a video inside this video of, of a DOE. Um, uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I'm on my computer now. I just wanted to show you guys a design of experiment template that's a, that somebody shows how you to set one up on Excel. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this part of this. Um, it's kind of hard to, let me get this set. Design of experiments can help you find uh, the optimal settings for a machine or temperature or whatever without a whole lot of trial and error. You can imagine you might take hundreds of trials to try and figure out the right combination of ingredients to give you the optimum setting to produce an injected molded part or even to come up with a way to measure the, the optimal way to send out a direct mail piece to formula, formulate that direct mail piece. So in the QI macros, there are a series of templates you can use to help you do a DOE study. Up here, you'll see there's a number of factors. So you can insert your factor names here. You can do up to four factors. That's why they call it a two-factor, a three-factor, or a four-factor experiment. 
You want to set up the high levels and the low levels so that you can actually see what's going on. So I brought in some data here that we can use to do this. Let's just take that and copy that in there. So in this case, we have a die, and it's going to have a certain temperature. The low-level temperature is going to be room temperature, and the high temperature is going to be 200 degrees. Pour time, we want to vary that between 6 at the low end, and we'll also try it at 12 seconds. Now, what you want to do then is go out and conduct your experiments once you know what your high and low values are for each one of these. And so down in here, you'll see how you want to set up your trials. So trial number one, and you're going to randomize how you do these. It's going to have a low value, a minus, and a minus. And so we want to, in that case, look at die temperature at room temperature in a pour time of six seconds. We want to try that. The next one, die temperature would be high, pour time would be low. Here, it would be 200 degrees and 6 seconds. And last but not least, 200 degrees and 12 seconds for a pour time. So these are the key things you want to look at in terms of setting up each test, high and low. So what I've done is I've collected some data out here that we can use. Let's copy that in. So now we have some data from our studies. We want to go down and look at the charts to see what's going on here. So you can see there's from low to high temperature, room temperature to 200 degrees, one, and pour time six to whatever. And whatever this metric is, I'm not exactly sure from the original data. And then we come down and look at the interactions between these two. And here you'll see that there's a significant change in this process. So when the pour time is low, it looks like that. Pour time high, it's like this. So our optimal point for this will be right at that intersection. So that looks like it might take, instead of 6, it might, or 12, it might take mm, 10 seconds would be the optimal pour time. And we want our die temperature to be high. So this is a way to quickly be able to hone in on exactly the way to set up your system so that it'll work easily. Now I also brought in an example of one for DOE injection molding. And in this case, we had seven different factors using the L8 Taguchi matrix. Again, you'll see all the different setups for each one of the trials. Same thing with putting in your data. Up here, we'll show you where the interactions are. Well, one and three, injection speed and melt temperature have an interaction. One and five and one and six, injection speed and holding time and cooling time. So it appears that that one thing interacts with a lot of different things. Go down here, you can see where the different piece parts of each one of these are. If we come down and look at how the factors interact, when they're in parallel, there is no interaction. So factor number one and factor number two really have no interaction. However, one and three, as we said before, there's an interaction. Two and three, it appears that at the very low end there might be some interaction, but that's probably the optimal point, is low and whatever the temperature is would be optimal. So here you can start to see that it's easy to analyze some fairly complex trials of things to come up with the optimal way to select how to run any given machine or any given test of two different things and come up with the right answers using the QI macros and the DOE template. Okay guys, well, oh my camera's moving. Okay guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative to you guys um, to understand what a DOE is. Um, you can use these in any kind of industry. They have different templates that you can use. Most companies will give you what they want you to use, like the engineering department will say they might want to do fill time, uh, cushion, peak pressure, and cycle time. That might be the only four that they want to monitor and keep track of. So those would be the four that you'd go out there and you'd go ahead and you'd start with a low limit and a high limit and see where your part goes from in there. 
and you're checking for part weight, part variation, stuff like that to see how low you can actually get that to where you're running a robust process, you're running a faster cycle time and less scrap. That's what you're looking for. That's your main goal is to do that. The faster you run it, the more parts you make, the more money you make for your company. Okay, so I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Um, let me know in the next coming weeks what you guys would like to see, and I will try to get those put out to you guys. I do appreciate all the support to the channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. Till next time, peace.